Praise the Lord. Dear friends, today we are going to read, study, analyze the prayer Jesus taught. It's the most beautiful prayer ever prayed and ever written. A prayer taught by Jesus himself. Both Luke and Matthew, two evangelists, report the prayer taught by Jesus. This prayer is learned by heart by all the Christians and many who do not call themselves Christians also. A prayer that can be prayed by anyone, anyone who believes in God, anyone who is in need of God, anyone who is happy, anyone who is sad, anyone who rejoices or regrets. In any situation of life, this prayer is the prayer that will express your feelings towards God. Luke and Matthew report two versions of the same prayer. Even though the prayer is the same, the context in which the prayer is set and the wordings of the prayer in both evangelists are different. In fact, we know there are four Gospels all reporting the life, teaching, preaching, ministry, passion, death and resurrection of Jesus. So the life of Jesus is presented by four evangelists, but in four different ways. There is agreement in the substance of the teaching, of the mission, the ministry of Jesus. But when it comes to details, there are so many differences. All the same, there is only one Jesus. The same Jesus is presented in four different ways. The same way. The same prayer of Jesus has come down to us in two different versions. First, we will read both versions and then try to find out what are the differences and what might be the original rendering of the prayer. Gospel of Matthew chapter 6 verses 9 to 13 and Gospel of Luke chapter 11 verses 2 to 4 report the prayer of Jesus. First, let us read the Gospel of Matthew chapter 6 verses 9 to 13. Pray then in this way. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And do not bring us to the time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. This is the Gospel of Matthew. Now we come to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 11, verses 2 to 4. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins. For we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us. And do not bring us to that time of trial. So that is the Gospel of Luke. From a peripheral observation, we can find the difference. The conspicuous difference is this. The Gospel of Matthew gives a rather lengthy version, whereas in Luke we have a shorter version of the same prayer. Matthew has an address followed by seven petitions, whereas in Luke we have an address followed by five petitions. In the wordings also you find some difference. The address in Matthew is longer. Our Father who art in heaven. Whereas in Luke it is very short. Just one word, Father. And then the petitions also differ. The question is being asked, who is more faithful to the original teaching of Jesus? Who reports the original words of Jesus, Matthew or Luke? It would be strange to ask the question, did the evangelists change the words of Jesus? Rather than reporting the words of Jesus, did they add their own? It's not a strange question. It's a question that everybody who reads the Gospels face. I mentioned about the four Gospels and four different versions of the life and teaching of Jesus. If you compare any teaching of Jesus in two or three different Gospels, we see some minor changes, minor differences. It wouldn't mean that Jesus was saying so in one place and so in another place. It's the different traditions that kept the words of Jesus have somehow changed. 
So there is a possibility that either Luke or Matthew has some, made some adaptations or changes in the words of Jesus in order to make it more appealing or reasonable, understandable to the community for which they were writing. There is also another possibility that Jesus in two times presented the prayer in two different ways. First the shorter form and then maybe later he added some additions, some interpretations to the original shorter form. Even though that is a possibility, the biblical scholars do not uh, accept the possibility that Jesus taught two versions of the prayer. The, those who study Bible scientifically think that one of the two versions are more original. Following some of the, the rules of biblical criticism, the majority of scholars think that the Gospel of Luke gives us the more original version of the prayer for many reasons. First of all, the version of Luke is entirely contained in the Gospel of Matthew. So Matthew takes up the whole thing what is in Luke. There is nothing missing from the version of Luke in the Gospel of Matthew. On the, if you take the other way around, from the Gospel of Matthew, we find something missing in the Gospel of Luke. So the reasonable conclusion would be, an evangelist would not dare to manipulate, to uh, avoid some essential teachings of Jesus, especially on such an important teaching as the Lord's own prayer. An evangelist consciously would not cut down anything. So it is more probable, more reasonable to think that Matthew has made some additions additional interpretations to the prayer of Jesus rather than Luke avoided any of the prayers, any of the words Jesus had taught. So this seems to be more reasonable. Luke gives the authentic original version whereas Matthew gives some additions. Even though they are additions, even though we accept their additions, they also come from the teaching of Jesus. It's an interpretation in the community. That is why the Matthean version is usually accepted by all Christian denominations, without exception. Because Matthew contains everything in Luke and a little more. So this is a liturgical presentation of the prayer Jesus taught. And there is a tendency to add more and more to such prayers. And in the liturgy, especially in many oriental liturgies, we see additions to the prayers of Jesus, be it at the beginning or be it at the end. The essential content, the prayer as Jesus taught can be found in Luke, whereas in Matthew we have an interpreted version. And this interpreted version is accepted by all the churches and that's what we are going to study in detail. The prayer Jesus taught is reported by both evangelists with an introduction. Luke gives an introduction presenting the context. Luke 11, 1. He was praying in a certain place and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. So Luke is presenting the prayer as being taught by Jesus at the request of the disciples. John the Baptist taught his disciples to pray. The Pharisees taught their disciples to pray. Every religious leader and founder used to teach their disciples to pray. So, it's a communal, ecclesiastical aspect of prayer is brought out by Luke. It's a prayer of the community, a prayer taught by Jesus at the request of the community. Whereas in Matthew, the prayer is presented in a different context. It comes as part of that long sermon on the mount. The sermon on the mount which is parallel to the sermon on Sinai. It's the revelation of the new covenant. The presentation of the new Moses. The church being presented with the gospel, the content of the new gospel. So the teaching of Jesus presented as a sermon on the mount includes also the teaching on prayer. In fact, the chapter 6 of Matthew deals with much with prayer and other religious activities. So in the context of the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew presents the Sermon of Jesus, the teaching on prayer. And this is preceded by two comments. Jesus teaches the disciples on the community concerning prayer. 
two important comments are made, and that we will find in chapter 6, verses 5 to 8. Whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. So one attitude that one, the disciples should avoid is the desire to show, to show off. Hypocrisy is an evil, an attitude that Jesus does not approve, an attitude that God hates. Hypocrisy, you have something in your mind and you say something else. Your word and your faith do not tally. What is inside and what is outside don't agree. So Jesus wants the disciples to be cautious against such hypocritical attitude. You should not make prayer a show business. Prayer is something that happens in your heart. It's not to show somebody. So don't be a hypocrite. Like the Pharisaic leaders used to do, he said, praying in the synagogues, praying in the open place. Of course, Jesus doesn't forbid people to pray in any place. But don't make a, the prayer a business. Don't pray in order to show others. So then what should be the attitude? Verse 6. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret. And your father who sees in secret will reward you. Go into your room. Shut your door. Pray in secret. What does it mean, go into your room? You can be in any room, but your mind can be wandering. So what is Jesus asking is not to go into any physical room and close the door. Close the doors and windows of your mind, your senses. That means come into utter darkness. Come into silence. Enter the cave of your heart where God resides. God speaks in the secret. God speaks at night. To be attentive to God, to listen to God, to wait for God. We have so many instances in the Bible where we find God speaking to people in the darkness, in the loneliness of the desert of the room. We see Moses in the desert. Moses fled the presence of Pharaoh because he was afraid. He was afraid because Moses found out that the Pharaoh had discovered the murder Moses committed in order to save a fellow Israelite. Moses fled to the wilderness and there he was tending the sheep of his father-in-law Jethro. And then he comes to the Mount Sinai, the Mount of God, there alone with his sheep. There he encounters God in the desert, in a burning bush. For the first time, the true God reveals himself to Moses in the loneliness of the desert, in the isolation of the Mount Sinai, in the burning bush. God encounters Moses in the utter loneliness of the desert. The same God again appears to Moses on the same mountain when he has accomplished his mission of liberating the people and guiding them through the desert. Moses came with the people of Israel and camped, encamped at the mount, foot of the mountain. And Moses went up. There he spent 40 days and 40 nights, alone, waiting for the Lord. And in the midst of the darkness, God spoke. God spoke the ten words, the ten commandments, the new law by which the people have to be guided. Moses received the revelation. Moses listened to God's word in the darkness of the mountain. The same thing happens with Samuel, the great leader of Israel, the last judge and the priest who anointed kings Saul and David. This young boy, Samuel, was called by God in the darkness of a room where the Ark of the Covenant was kept. The boy was asleep, alone in the dark room. There God comes and calls Samuel, Samuel. You'll see it in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 3. He could not understand the voice of God first. The priest Eli interpreted it to him. In the silence of the darkness of night, God spoke. And there Samuel became a prophet. He became the spokesperson of God because he listened to God in the darkness. Same thing happens with Elijah. 
Elijah on Mount Horeb. He fled from Jezebel because he was afraid of the queen's wrath. There he hid himself in a cave and he was waiting, waiting for the Lord. We see it in the first book of Kings chapter 19. He got up and ate and drank and then he went in the strength of that food 40 days and 40 nights to Horeb, the Mount of God. At that place he came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the Israelites who have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind so strong that it was splitting the mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. The silence that speaks prayer is waiting for the Lord in silence. Jesus asked to enter the room, close the door and wait for the Lord. This is what Jesus used to do. This is what the disciples were asked to do. There were so many people coming and going that the disciples had no time to even to eat food. That is in Mark chapter 6. Then Jesus tells them, come, let us go to a lonely place and rest for a while. Now to sum up, we have two versions of the prayer Jesus taught in the Gospel of Matthew as well as in the Gospel of Luke. The Lucan version seems to be more original than that of Matthew. Still, the Matthean version is the most widely used prayer. This is presented as a liturgical prayer and a prayer that everybody can use. And while teaching this prayer, Jesus asked the disciples to have certain attitude, the attitude of silence, a silence to listen to God's word. Next session, we will start analyzing the prayer proper.